Hello, hello. It's Elizabeth Busby here, the Director of Programs for the Theology of the Body Institute. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of my Discerning Marriage podcast. I am super happy about my guests today. They are really close personal friends of mine, and they were on my podcast back when it was just audio, and their episode was one of my most popular ones. And I've gotten a lot of questions that they are very equipped to answer, so I'm really pumped to have them back. Please help me welcome Will and Rebecca Hickel. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. We're excited to be back. (laughs) This is so fun. It's like friend hangout time and work at the same time. This is like the best. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to kind of pretend none of you have listened to their episode on my other podcast, even though you totally should go do that when you're done with this, Um, because it's their discernment story and how they knew they were called to get married. And there are a lot of really fun elements about them that you guys will appreciate on that audio podcast. But for those of you who haven't heard it and who aren't going to listen to it, I want them to give you a background of who they are. So I'm going to give them the stage and they can talk about who they are. And Bex will start talking for like two seconds and you'll know why they're such experts in long distance relationships. So why don't y'all go and tell my people about you? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Um, So I'm Rebecca. Um, I am originally from the UK um, and I worked in ministry for the Diocese of Westminster for like um, eight years or so before I ended up moving here to the States. Um, And we moved because we got married. So we met um, and we dated long distance, we were engaged long distance, and then we got married on the 3rd of January, 2020, praise the Lord, just before the pandemic. There's a lot of faithfulness in just our story, and that is just a huge part of it. And then I moved to the States on the 7th, something like that, of January, so it was like five days later. Packed up my stuff, and I got on a plane, and here we are. So, Yeah, and I'm Will. I, uh, I met her because I got hired to do some gigs with a ministry that were is very near and dear to our heart. Uh, another theology body ministry called Echo Community, um, and uh, I was hired as a musician. She was organizing the events. I was there for three weeks. She couldn't resist. So, <laughs> no, <kidding>. but <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I could not help myself. I was very drawn to her like a week into being there and my best friend was there who's also my bandmate and I was like dude I I don't know man I just I have the feelings for Rebecca and he's like totally you know as best friends <laughs> yes. do and so um you know he encouraged me to to take the leap and so yeah I asked I asked her out at the end of the, the trip and um here we are so <laughs> I don't know, that's the very short version Okay, so what was the time, for people who don't know, what was the time between when y'all met at that Echo Retreat and when you got married on January 3rd? Two years, just over two years. So um, it was um, the end of October was when the retreat was in 2017. Yeah. And we got married the beginning of 2020. So it was a little over two years. Yeah. And that whole time y'all were long distance, but for a chunk that you spent Mm -hmm. in the States, which we'll talk about, but you technically officially lived long distance that entire time. That mm. entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So that's why they are joining me to talk about long distance relationships. <laughs> I totally for, always forget to like say what we're talking about because I get so excited about the people on the podcast. So we're going to be talking about long distance relationships. I get a lot of questions about how to do long distance relationships, about how like logistics for making them better, um, how to discern really well when you don't live day in and day out with someone. But what you're discerning is living day in and day out with someone. And so there's a lot of nuance there, right? And personally, in my own Mm. discernment as an adult, I dated long distance for like five weeks. And that is not enough to give anybody any tips, any tricks, any anything like that. So I have a lot of like, in theory knowledge, but in this situation in particular, practical knowledge is what people need and what people want. So I will often like if I get a question, I'll just ask Bex what to do. And she will give me a reply. But I'm really excited to have like them now answering some questions for you guys, like questions I commonly get. And so I have this resource for all of you. So we're going to launch into talking about long distance dating. And as you can see, they are super experts on it because they did super, super long distance dating in different countries across a massive ocean. So are y'all ready to get started with me asking you some questions? Absolutely. Such troopers. I love it. Okay. So what are some tips you each have? I want to hear from both of you. For people who are discerning getting into a relationship with someone who lives far away. And then I also want to hear about tips you have for people who are actively in one and want to continue to like foster that healthy dynamic and and create a healthy relationship when you don't see each other all the time. Yeah. So 
for getting into one, this is the the question that I tell people. I may have said in the last podcast, but for me, the I guess it was the question I asked myself was. If Rebecca lived down the street, would I hesitate to ask her out? You know, and the answer was like, absolutely not. I would be, you know, I would immediately. Right. So kind of just that like simple test of if the distance wasn't a factor, would I would I want to pursue this person? And if the answer is yes, then then, yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, praise God, we do have Zoom, FaceTime, Mm. you know, airplanes like you know we're not writing letters anymore by candlelight so um so it's it's very possible to start that and and to stay committed to that um you know and you just have to also like be mentally prepared like if if the answer to the question is yeah if they live down the street i would totally date or like pursue them um but then also you have to remember they're not down the street so the next question is am i willing to like commit to that that kind of, I guess, challenge of not seeing each other that often. And, and, and is that worth it? And then, and again, that's another great question of like, if you're like, man, this person is so amazing. Like, I don't care. You know, like I knew her for about three weeks and, and that's how I felt. I was like, I, I don't care about the distance, even the Atlantic ocean. Like that's how like struck I am, like how enamored I am with this, with this woman. Um, so, and, and I don't want to make, I don't want to like over like romanticize, you know, like rom-com the, th- the situation, like it doesn't have to be like, you know, like Hans Zimmer music playing in the background for you to think like, oh yeah, okay. I, this is how I feel. But, but just sim- simply ask, like, you know, it doesn't need emotion. Just what I date, th- what I want to pursue them if they're down the street. And if yes, mm-hmm. Am I willing to make that commitment? Whatever that's going to look like. And again, there's nuance with that. Like everyone's situation is going to look and feel different. But but for us, it was a no brainer. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I guess like my first point actually is just the caveat of like, yes, we're experts in long distance relationships for us. Right. <laughs> there's a reality mm. to everyone has very unique stories and unique ways that God is moving in their life. Um, Mm. And there's things that we can learn. But I think for me, it really just came down to what was it that God was doing in my heart at the time and just learning to step into that in new ways of trust. Um, I had been on maybe three or four dates with somebody who lived two hours away from me, like maybe a year or so before I met Will. And I decided that was too long of a long distance and I couldn't deal with the pressure of like, oh my gosh, we were going through all this effort and, up, and then it was like, whatever. So like, I long distance didn't work for me until I met him. And I think nice. like there is something there about um, one, who he was and how I felt like I could trust him and him pursuing me that felt like I was safe enough to step into that vulnerability of trusting of dating long distance Mm. but two I think it was because of what God was doing in my heart at the time there was definitely a lot in my prayer of um the Lord was just taking me through the annunciation in a very particular way and like it being a mystery of receptivity before Mary could be like present Christ to the world she had to like receive that gift in the first place and how like how do I learn to let God love me and it was also in a way of like how do I learn to let let God love me like there was something very specific that God was doing so like I don't know if that's necessarily a tip per se as much as like um I for me it was very much like the the way that God unfolded it and it was just mm. very step by step. I don't think either of us, there was definitely a moment when we first met of like, wow, you're like, you're cool. And we agreed to keep in touch. That was actually all we agreed to when he initially <laughs> left after those three weeks. It was like, well, can we just like keep in touch? And we would start talking every day, like either via message and then it was FaceTime. And um, that quickly grew into being something that I was willing to like fly across the planet for. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't, I'm willing to like move to the States when I first met him. Like there was no, right. that had to take time. And I think that's the other thing is sometimes we, I think this is all relationships, right? We jump into, well, can I li- see myself living with this person for forever? 
And it's like, well, that's not the question that's in front of me right now. The question nice. in front of me right now is, am I willing to go on a date? Am I willing to answer the phone? Right? Like that's actually, am I willing to get to know him better and like allow the Lord to move, right? Recognizing that until the moment that we get married, it is all changeable. Mm -hmm. um, we're not committed to anything up until that moment. So mm -hmm. I think that gave me freedom. I love that. That present moment that like the Lord is in the present moment. Grace is in the present moment. And so not getting super ahead of yourself. And that's excellent dating advice in general, right? Like don't get ahead of yourself. What is the Lord asking you to say yes to right now? And do you want to say yes to it? But I think it has an especially significant, um, has especially significant place in the discernment of someone who lives far away from the person they're discerning with, because the reality is like, you're going to have to move one day. Someone's going to have to move, right? Like if you're going to get married, someone's going to have to give up everything that they know. And you don't know who it is at the beginning. And are you willing to do it? You know, that's not the question God's asking you in this moment. And if you get so caught up in that, you could miss something really beautiful. But I also, I didn't know that story about the guy who was two hours away and it was two too long of a distance. That is really good advice too, of like the person in front of you. So those of you who are not in a long distance relationship, maybe don't start discerning one today until you meet a person and you decide if you want to um, be in a relationship with that person. So that's very, very excellent advice. Now yeah, about- I would say, I would say oh, yeah. sorry, uh, I, I would say on the other side of that, if you're not in a relationship, don't write off long distance per se, mm. you know, from the get-go right like because i honestly did have that like the relationship before rebecca was kind of long distance and yeah, i had that active thought of like ah i'll never do that again <laughs> um but i mean i guess she was <laughs> she was special enough to like knock that over so maybe maybe that's a sign i don't know but but either way like just i would i guess my my advice here is like just stay open in general because you just never know i love it there really is something to the person that you are discerning marriage with. You know, we talk about mm. discerning marriage in general, and I do think you can do that. Like, I think for some people, the Lord is like very clearly closing doors to celibacy, you know, priesthood, religious life, whatever that is for you. But you're not actually truly able to discern marriage until you're discerning it with someone. Um, that was a piece of random dating advice I got from my high school youth minister. And I still remember it's like, you're discerning with one person and that y'all are so clearly saying how good that is you know like that's that's how it's playing out in your life is like you didn't have the grace if you will to be able to discern well or, well you did discern well honestly you discerned that they weren't a good fit for you but you it was like discerning marriage with that the people you were discerning with before who were kind of long distance ish well they were long distance but compared to you guys it was like Absolutely. Ish. Um, talk yeah. about that. in the discernment of spirits is it it should be rooted in something real like I can't nice. discern a job that I'm not applying for or like is in front of like there needs to be a reality of god moves in tangible things too and like mm. there's comfort i think sometimes in that like am i called to this thing well if that's not a reality in front of me then probably not right now it doesn't necessarily mean not ever but like not and like there's something in that so mm. at least for us that was it made it easier you know yeah, absolutely. So once someone's in a relationship, though, like once they're they've started mm -hmm. and let's let's say they're already committed, right? They've done the friendship. They've done the dating, their boyfriend, girlfriend, and they are discerning marriage. So what are some tips to foster a healthy relationship dynamic when you are long distance, whether you're two hours or you're I don't know, how many hours apart were you guys? I guess like eight. Uh, a lot. Yeah, well, it's time it. was six hours. The flight was nine or ten hours, but yeah, OK a lot most um, of the day. Okay. <laughs> yes it's not really I can just go for a weekend um yeah I think some healthy ways of discerning if that person like is a good spouse um again at least in my experience is it really came down to who he was as a person and what I saw in that I think we both would say that there are positives to long distance relationships in that it forced us to be very clear in our communication. Mm -hmm. We had to, um, yes. and I had to also learn that he can't mind read, right? And she's still learning that. <laughs> three years in he can't mind read. Um, but that's because there's a very true thing of he can't see any of my day. Everything that he knows mm. is because I have to tell him. 
and I think that was a really great practice for me in particular. Um, and I also, I think, was really helpful because it, um, when like our technology was being laggy or frustrating or like you're having that really deep conversation and then the signal cuts out <laughs> and I get really frustrated and annoyed having to learn to separate the frustration and annoyance from him right he's not Ooh. it's not his fault I'm just annoyed and like there's a there's something very important for me there too of um that was just a good practice for us in our marriage I think that was really helpful so there were some positives right to dating long distance um yeah. And we'll probably move on to some of those too. But um, mostly it actually, I think, came down to there were certain attributes that I saw in him as a person that I knew made him a good spouse for me. Um, he's an extremely selfless person. And I could see that in just the ways that he was interacting with the people around him. He has friendships that he's been maintaining since he was like starting school, right? That actually like kindergarten can... school like early on right uh, yeah sorry school school not like college not like school. university um, yeah. it's a right. long time it's one of the um, impressive attributes of you will like you have you are very good at maintaining friendships over decades it's impressive well thank you and like there's something i at least for me that was something that i really appreciated because it meant that I could trust him to stick with it through the thick and the thin kind of mm. like he's done that with all of the other people. He could do that with me. Um, and like that was there were just certain things that I remember even in like those first few weeks as I'm getting to know who he is as a person that those really stood out to me. Um, he is a great investor in people um, and he's a great cheerleader of people. And I was like, man, what a gift to be married to somebody who would cheer people on is like their natural living and breathing self. Yeah. And she's such a great affirmer. I was like, I got to keep her around. She's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> she, <laughs> she got, no, no. No, and I would say, and I guess to, to go off that, thank you for those kind words, love. Um, for her, for me and for her, like, I guess with my background, what was, what really was important to me in dating long distance is trust, right? Because mm -hmm. neither of us, you know, we, we texted here and there, but really we would talk for like one to two hours a day at a specific time, usually at the end of her day. Um, and like right before like oh, my dinner yeah. time, um, I wasn't even thinking about that. And so like, difference. that, yeah, the six hours actually, I think works better than if they're like an hour ahead, but anyways, um, we can, that's a whole nother, uh, someone, someone email me, but if you want to talk about that, it's, <laughs> So riveting time zones. Anyways. Um. <laughs> okay. Email me, you guys. Email me or message me on, on Instagram and I will send their contact information to you. We'll yeah. Do that. Anyways. Um, yeah, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but, um, but like for both of us, our lives were so separate in a way that like, you know, my insecurity before meeting her, and this was actually kind of a cool healing moment for getting to know her was just the fact that like, I didn't, I didn't necessarily have trust issues, but the reason I wrote off long distance was because like, you know, I've been cheated on before. So I'm like, oh, I just don't even allow that possibility of, you know, you know, of, of being, being someone being unfaithful. Um, and so I could just sense in her and just through conversation and through like getting to know her for a few weeks and just some of her friends too. And, and the ability she also has to, um, invest in people um and really love them well um like i just i got this overwhelming kind of sense of peace that like this is a woman i can trust more than anyone i've ever met mm -hmm. you know uh, which was which is a lot of grace because obviously it's not like i had to put you know i had to figure that out as well as like just kind of knowing it but i was willing to because i you know god i guess gave me that gift of like she's okay and i was like yeah she is <laughs> um and uh, but to boil it down, it's just like, it, you know, the trust aspect. Can can you trust that person? It, do y'all have um, a good amount of trust? And I think that is reinforced with good communication, right? Just like with mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. um, so we we're both really adamant about making sure we communicated. We we're both very and praise God for both of our formations. Like we're huge fans of studying theology of the body and in just other various kind of catholic faith formation and, and human person formation in general like 
Um, I think, I think there was a lot, and, and this kind of goes into like, you know, for some listeners who are like, oh, like I, if you're finding yourself like in despair of like, oh, I'm getting older and I'm not finding someone. We didn't get married till we were 30. And honestly, like, I kind of like that. Like, I like that I'm, <laughs> we're both like, kind of, we know who we are. We're both very mature. We're both, we both have achieved a, a nice level of like self mastery, um, you know, in some ways. So, um, so yeah, I guess that's, Another tip is <laughs> trying to pursue self mastery, but I'll stop right there because I could probably keep ranting. That's like an entire episode in and of itself. But I do think that that's one of the things I love about y'all's story too is that y'all were older, relatively speaking. I mean, a lot of people get married right out of college in their early to mid 20s, and you guys did not get married right out of college in your early to mid 20s. And I think that there are people who get really like when you're in your 30s and you're in your 40s, you get, have a really hard time with. Like, is the Lord ever going to come? And so I think that's another beautiful thing about your story. That is not particularly relevant to this long distance, but is something beautiful that can give some people hope who are listening. There's e even if you have to go to the other side of the world to find them, the Lord will make it happen for you in his perfect time. That's okay. Good. So yeah. I want to switch to talking about the emotions of long distance dating, um, because mm -hmm. you, you already have all of these when you're dating someone, you already have all of the big feelings. Like that's the way that God created our bodies. There's this like beautiful hormonal cocktail that comes when you're like falling in love with somebody. And it's just, it's really fun and wonderful. But you guys had the added suffering of not being together, right? And you guys had an added level of emotions. I'm sure there were some really positive mm. ones, but there were also some really negative ones that I think couples who are not long distance, maybe don't have a lot of understanding of empathy for I don't know so I just want to hold some space for you guys to talk about the emotions of it um how you manage them all of it from the whole spectrum I think there's things I haven't even thought about because I, I wasn't in it so emotions in general take it wherever you want <laughs> yeah um I think that one of the emotional things for me has been the reality of what I've had to leave behind, mm. right? Mm. Um, and in some ways, Will understands it to a point, but there's not the same level of understanding of having to leave friends and family and move across the planet, right? That So there's something a little, um, it sounds dramatic to say isolating, but like there is a, a very real thing there that I've one, had to learn to articulate and two, only the Lord fully knows, right? But I think that was one of like the hardest things for me in terms of some of that discernment. In some ways, it was mm. also one of the easiest. I don't think I necessarily hugely questioned whether it was going to be me who moves first or you, because whilst you had offered that, and there's like a whole story about why we've ended up where we've ended up. Um, mm. And we were... I think it was important for me that we were both willing to move. Mm, um, that's huge. But Absolutely. That, at least for me, I know that that's not everyone's story and there's like probably a lot in that, but at least the reality is that we would both be prepared and we still are prepared to give everything for the sake of the other. Like that mm. was, that's what it needed to be for me. Um, just it's more, it's my turn right now, right? In a very particular way. And that's not to say that he hasn't had to sacrifice things for our marriage, but it just looks different. Mm -hmm. um, and along with that is all of the emotions of all of my people that I've left behind too. Um, that when we first got engaged, most people were more sad than they were happy, partly because it meant that I was leaving. Um, so you knew by then, hard... you knew already. Like, I, I guess at what point did y'all, did y'all decide to get married before you decided who was moving? I guess that would make sense, right? I don't know. We had settled primarily on the States whilst we were dating and okay. I was in the process of working on a work visa and getting gotcha. a job here in the States okay. um, when we got engaged. Hmm. The Lord basically took our visa in a different direction, um, which is a whole story in itself. And <laughs> we used to always joke, actually, that we would never encourage anyone to ever date long distance, I know. particularly with the visa. So it's hysterical <laughs> that you're having a fun for this conversation because visas suck. And it's so funny because I know quite a few people that are English and American couples 
and every single one of them has been through a visa, different visa process. So you can talk oh my about like, oh my God, got the hints and tips, but at the same time, no one's done it. And like, you only ever do it once, right? Because I'm not yeah. going to re- anyways, it's, it's, yes, it's a whole thing. <laughs> um, but that's okay. He's worth it. Um, so we had decided on the States before we were engaged. Okay. Um, so your so people knew, knew that, that you saying yes um, meant that you were moving. Ooh, but it was lot. then this solidified like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that emotionally was very difficult to me. Um, I think that just ways of dealing with that. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, because that's there's a lot there. Um, and I don't know if I really have anything other than like continuing to bring that to prayer. Um. That was a huge part of it. I think learning to articulate that um, and receiving, Will just being, giving me space um, Mm -hmm. for those days, particularly I think when we were like early married. I mean, in some ways there was a lot of blessing, I think in the pandemic of the whole world shut down and nobody saw anybody. So actually Mm -hmm. it wasn't like I didn't see my family. I didn't see anybody in quite the same way. So like, Anyways, um, God has been very faithful to us. And I think um, there's something very particular about the ways that he's been loving on me and my heart, Um, which just goes to, I think, some of that confirmation of vocation, right? Mm. And that nothing is isolated from our own personal journey with God and like our own Mm. prayer life. Um, So really, it's just that step-by-step journey with him and like just that encouragement, I guess, to keep diving into that um so yes i think prayer for the emotions i think articulating it um i think also i had to learn to let go of um making other people happy hmm. um there Ooh, needs to also just yeah. be a bit of- um this is a good decision for me and i felt sure about that and i just had to let other people's emotion be their thing um and sometimes that's easier said than done but um there was some of that boundaries um boundaries boundaries. never really far from boundaries so you just had good boundaries around people and work to develop those in your heart as people were bringing their feelings to you and you were like okay well but this is my decision and i this is what the lord's calling me to and i have the grace for it absolutely and i do think that that comes really with a lot of motion is like well what am i choosing to do with that um how am i choosing to see that and i think right as we're like beginning to raise another human like that's actually just good human formation and some of that too of <laughs> yes. like how do i deal with like the good and the bad emotions and what do i do with that and is it somebody else's fault that i feel the way that i feel and it's like well no like i have a responsibility also for how i feel and it's not his fault that i feel sad and it's not his job to make me feel better he can sympathize and recognize that it's hard but this is also my choice and there's, I think, there's a lot. Yeah. In that. There's a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know. Other emotions? One of you? I, I mean, you know, obviously, you miss the person. Um, mm. And there can be frustrations of, like, logistical things. Like, oh, like... Maybe they forgot to buy the train ticket or maybe they like, you know, uh, like flights are getting canceled for X, Y and Z reason or or maybe there's a global pandemic. I mean, we thankfully didn't have to traverse Mm -hmm. dating during the pandemic, which is a whole nother like there's no way we'd be able to understand that. But but, you know, I think just learning to manage emotion um, just like you would in your normal life, I guess, like, mm-hmm. you know, like if you're upset, what do you, what do you cope with? If you're, if you miss them, like, you know, just, I know it might sound cheesy, but really just offering that to the Lord of like, oh, I'm just aching for this person mm-hmm. to be here. And, and I know I have faith that one day they will be. And of course, if you're working towards marriage, um, then yeah, you know, and I think that helped us is like, cause there was a stint, like we were good about seeing each other about once a month, once every five, six weeks. And then there was a stint where I don't think we saw each other for like four, six months or something like right Ooh. before we got married. So that was hard. Um, but you get kind of used to it. And then also, 
I, I guess for us, since we were engaged, like the, there was light at the end of the tunnel, like, man, this sure. is, yeah. this is awful, but it's gonna, it's mm-hmm. gonna be great eventually, you know? And so, um, yeah. I also think there's a good practice in that too, of like the other, we're ultimately made for the Lord, right? That actually like these longings that we have ultimately are also for God. And mm. I think that it can be easy, particularly when we're dating, to try and put that on the other person of like, well, when I'm with you, I feel much better, mm. which is a beautiful and wonderful thing. But that isn't going to translate into marriage for forever. Yeah. Like right. that's not um, part of the discerning marriage process, right, mm. is you are not my final fulfillment and you will not mm. make me happy ultimately. Mm. And I love spending time with you, but there's – and I think that in some ways that helped with some of that clarity of like, nice. what do I do with this achiness? How do I manage my, and like, that's for all of us, right? But sometimes I think if you're just down the street from somebody, perhaps that's an easier fix, quote unquote, as opposed to, wouldn't it be great just to get on a plane? I remember having those moments when we were dating of like, oh, I would love it if he just walked in the door right now. And like, he just oh. totally surprised me, <laughs> which never happened. I mean, I would have loved to. Have I know, that. right? But it's just like, it's funny how, I wanted that, um, mm-hmm. but there was a lot of really beautiful things that actually happened as opposed mm-hmm. to these imagined things. That was made. And like, nice. I think that there's a process there of splitting apart the fantasy, I guess, quote word from like the reality and like, what is it that's real and like how I, and we started talking about that right at the beginning, right? Like, actually, there's something very important about the realness that God is yep. doing and the realness of this person in front of me and that they're not in and of themselves a full a fulfillment. Um, hmm. So I think that's also, I don't know, pray more. That's, that's <laughs> our advice. Easy. Actually, I really love, I kind of, I thought that prayer was going to be something that you guys talked about. Um, I feel like this quote, the Lord is doing something in my heart right now, here now with this quote, because I've said it in the last like four episodes. But if you haven't seen an episode mm-hmm. where I've said it, um, Pope Benedict in one of his books quotes um, the church fathers. And he says, according to the church fathers, something like that, prayer properly understood is nothing other than becoming a longing for God. And I t- say mm. a lot that I think dating couples are really in touch with that longing. People discerning marriage or single people discerning marriage are really in touch with that longing. I think long distance couples are really, really in touch with that longing. Um, because like you said, the person isn't right there. Like there's no instant gratification ever. Like you're, it's a plan for most people. It's a planned something and you know, you're going to see them then and you're not going to see them other times. And so you have this opportunity to turn this longing, this ache into real prayer where you re like Bex, you were saying you reorient that and remember like God is the ultimate fulfillment of my desires. And I think that's one of those things that every person always has to learn. Lots of people have to figure that out when they're married. Um, you guys got the opportunity yeah. and other people who are dating long distance get the opportunity to figure that out before you're married. So I feel like you have this potential for your marriage to be a lot more fruitful because you're not trying to make the other person fulfill you because you already learned that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I have to take my longing somewhere else. Um, so that was, I did not know exactly where you were going to go with that other than I hoped you would talk about prayer, which you did, but the rest of the stuff that you said is really wonderful. And I hadn't even thought about the stuff you were saying, Bex, about like when you're actually discerning who's moving, um, and where are you Mm -hmm. guys going to settle and how those emotions play into it. So thank you for being like so raw with me. That's really, really helpful. Okay, I have one more question for you guys. I love ending these episodes on practical tips that people can use right away um, because I feel like so much, depending on where you are in your life um, and in your own discernment, a lot of this is like great ideal, but isn't necessarily super like grounded in the practicality. And we talked about reality a lot this time. So based on this conversation we've had, long distance dating, what is one practical tip that you would give my listeners that they could use like today when they hang up? I want one from each of you. What is one practical tip you would give my listeners? Um, well, I might I might be stealing hers, but uh, <laughs> but we, we talked about when we were talking about what's a tip we wanted to give. We were both just um, reflecting on community and how important that is. Ooh, um, yes. So, you know, if you're in a long distance relationship or not, but if you are, you know, really like almost to the to the last point of like not trying to make your your boyfriend or girlfriend like 
the everything, you know, um, one way to like, I guess, get out of that mindset is to like, make sure that you're present to your family and your friends and like, mm. you know, having, having a life that you are living uh, every day that is, you know, full and in pursuit of, you know, holiness and, um, and in pursuit of your passion, you know, I, because I'm a musician, like, you know, I, maybe I'd be sad, I'd miss her, but then I'd also be like, you know what, like, I'm just going to make music for a few hours because I can. And so then, you know, mm. kind of, I don't want to say burying, like running away from, but, but definitely like getting lost in like passion and getting, you know, making, making time for a lot of, a lot of friends, you know, and a lot of family. Um, and so, you know, I don't know. So yeah, community and uh, community. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would also sum up some of that of what Will just said is the mm -hmm. learning to make a gift of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That actually that yes, is yes, primarily yes. what TOB teaches us that all of us in human, as humans are called to do. We're called to make a good gift of ourselves. And that takes practice and that takes opportunity and um, learning to find those opportunities to be able to give of yourself so I do think that that um one of them is community and in a specific way for me that looked like having other people also investing in me um mm. when Will was he wasn't around so like actually I could still make sure that I was going and having dinner and coffee and all of these things with my friends and making sure I was spending time investing in all of these other people in part because particularly when we started it's like well i don't know if this is going to work out and i still need people at the other end of this if it doesn't work out right um and actually having those people and being able to learn to articulate to them in the same way that i'm also articulating to him they can help me in that pursuit of discernment um in part right because they can either reflect certain things back to me and like ask me questions um, and that was a big part for me of just some of that December journey was those people that we were journeying with along um, at the time. Um, and I would say the same of like actually learning to today make a good gift of myself and learning today mm. to to like continue to grow in virtue. What does that look like? Does that mean being more patient with my coworker? Does that mean spend more time in adoration and like actually making that more of a um a part of my rhythm um does that mean having to go to confession and like diving into the sacraments more like whatever that pursuit of virtue is um particularly if we're not married yet like I think that there's something about like the more we can grow in like that journey of holiness and pursuit of holiness the more of a gift it is to our spouse when we actually say yes at the altar mm, um, because preach. I'm already on that journey that I can then give you myself at this place where I've right um hopefully further along than i would have been um so i think that's my tip is continue to pursue virtue and now you can all see why i wanted to marry this woman so uh, yes. you heard it here first oh <laughs> you're <spirit. laughs> um, i was gonna I say a... this oh go go oh go. sorry yeah no i was gonna say i have like two more like practical actiony yes. tips yes. so like yes. for the men like if you if there is somebody that you're like you're listening to this, you're like oh yeah so and so that that's who comes to mind then what do you got to lose man go for it <laughs> but then also it. for both men and women here's another thing for both men and women if you're in a long distance relationship and you're having you're having doubts um i'm not saying like oh you need to break up but i would say like really like like discern that like asap you know um cuz one of the things for us is we we kind of checked in I wouldn't say it was like a check in, like, you still like me, but it was very like, we both knew, and I think it was communicated up front, maybe, I don't know, maybe we just both thought this simultaneously, but almost like, like, we're not going to waste each other's time. And we're not going to spend a lot of money flying across the ocean, mm. if it's not going to work out. And if we have any inkling of like, ah, maybe not, then like, save yourself the time, money, trouble, emotion, and you know, all the things um and and but then don't get mad at me and and say like oh well i listen to podcasts and i need to break up with you because the guy said if i had doubts like wrestle with the doubts but also like don't don't go ahead and make haste like you know life is too short and 
I don't know. Anyways, so. Amen. My longtime listeners will know that I am a very big advocate of breakups as successful discernments. Um, getting married doesn't mean you discern successfully. Deciding what God's will for, is for you and figuring out what you want and what the Lord is calling you to, that's a successful discernment. So sometimes the answer is yes, and that's really fun. Sometimes the answer is no, and that's just as successful, just not as fun. So I have breakup resources mm. if, if anyone takes Will's advice um, and decides to pursue that. But I mean, as both of you said earlier, alluded to earlier in this episode, like you discerned with somebody else and the answer was no. And thank God that you had the courage to end that relationship because look, you would have never found each other. And the incredible, beautiful fruit that your love is is generating right now is because you successfully discerned no with somebody else so that you were free to say yes to each other. So I love that piece of advice. Mm-hmm. Well, that's courageous and good. I like it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for coming on my show. I, you know, I just love your friendship so much and you're such gifts to me. I don't think I mentioned that Will and I met in college like a really long time ago. How long ago was that? More than a decade ago. Well, yeah, it was. 2010. So yeah. Yep. And we did Theology yeah. of the Body work together then. And we're doing Theology of the Body work together now. <laughs> and it's so fun. And Bex, you are such a joy. Yeah. And I am so glad, Will, that you had the courage to date her because what a beautiful gift you have given all of us. Like we would have never known her. Mm-hmm. And because of your courage and because of your yes, and because Bex, you were willing to say yes to him, even when it meant seriously leaving your father and mother and be joining to your spouse and becoming one flesh. We are all so blessed to know you. So thank you all for your discernment. Thank you for coming and talking with me and my people. Such a joy. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Elizabeth. We love you. You're welcome. And all of you, thank you so much for joining in. I hope this was fruitful. Will very generously offered to talk to all of you personally. So please email me um, if you you have a question or DM me on Instagram at Discerning Marriage if you have a question and I will pass along your info to Will. So um, until next time, stay close to the heart of Jesus and be not afraid. Bye. 